So we'll go look at, now we're gonna, the only thing we're gonna change in this example are um, in step six with rate and state friction are the friction properties as well as the, uh, um, the initial tractions. So let's go to step, oops. So I update file names. This now I'm going to go 200 years with a time step of one year. Um, this was is due to the fact that with rate and state friction, I needed a longer duration to get uh, sort of two significant slip events, and I needed a finer time resolution to see the evolution of the friction um, to be stable with the rate and state dependence. Um, same boundary conditions, uh, generally the same fault. Except now for my friction, I'm using rate and state friction with the aging law. Uh, my linear slip rate uh, threshold was, is 10 to the minus six. Um, use a simple grid for my rate and state friction parameters. Use a uniform database for my initial state variable. So if I don't give an initial value for the state variable, I use a value of zero. Um, a state variable value of zero is very far away from where the steady state behavior is and i'm trying to sort of start near where i think the steady state is and so the steady state sliding near my reference slip rate is equal to the characteristic characteristic slip distance divided by the reference slip rate so i have this value here that i'm specifying from for the initial state is i have taken my friction model parameters computed what the what i think um, the uh, steady state variable is for the, uh, what I think the steady state value is for the state variable and set that as the initial value for the state variable. So in this case, it has units of time, so I can use the, uh, the prior uh, dimensional quantity in to say 20 years, um, rather than trying to give it in terms of seconds. Um, initial tractions, I'm gonna be uniform. So here I use, I'm gonna use a reference coefficient of friction of 0.6. Um, so I'm gonna start with values consistent with that. So again, normal traction uniform, minus 20 megapascals, shear, uh, initial shear traction equal to that reference coefficient of friction times the normal traction or uh, 12 megapascals. Um, for my output, I'm gonna do slip, slip rate traction as well as a state variable. That allows me to check my assumption of how close I might be to my steady state value. Um, of 20 years. Uh, and then bottom of the slab is the same. Values uh, is before, so let's look at our rate and state properties. So again, simple grid spatial database. I'm gonna use the same uh, spatial variation for my sliding. Um, again, I don't have Z. See, do I have the right units? Uh, well, you notice I don't even have the right values in my com my comments, so we'll fix that. So I want stable sliding in the top region. That means my value of B should be less than the value of A. So I give a uniform value of A of 0 0.015. Uh, I have B at five kilometers depth and above at 0 0.01. Then I want, in order to get a stress drop or unstable sliding, my value of B should be bigger than my value of A in the rate and state value uh, friction. So I gave it, in order to sort of get a, the stress drop I wanted, I chose a value of minus 0 0.017 for B. Um, and then at the, at the base, I give it a value of B equal to what I had near the surface of 0 0.01. So, uh, and then let's see, uh, cohesion is zero. Um, the rate and state, let's see, the order I did was, so reference coefficient of friction of 0.6. My reference slip rate, I'm giving it in centimeters per year. So um, I chose one centimeter per year. So something on the same order as my creep rate, but a little slower. And my characteristic slip distance, I use 0 0.2 meters. Um, those of you familiar with rate and state values that you normally get from the lab, 
we'll know that this is orders of magnitude larger than what's been measured for laboratory samples. And that's due to, remember, my, fault, my uh, mesh size is on the order of tens of kilometers. And so I don't have the resolution to look at slip distances of that small. I would need a, you know, when, I, when you have stress variations associated with such uh, small sort of slip weakening distances, um, you need a very fine mesh and very fine time steps. I'm trying to look at sort of the course, very big picture. And so I have to use much orders of magnitude larger uh, um, critical or D sub C values in my rate and state friction model to regularize it so that I have a numerical, numerically stable solution. If you try and use very small values, um, you'll see that the nonlinear solver has a tremendous problem and sometimes you can get non-physical behavior because it'll overshoot the slip in the wrong direction. Um, yeah. Well, stable sliding, usually you would... Oh, constantly sliding. Okay. Um, I would have to look to see what the... I think it's a matter of we did not... <laughs> Yeah, well, I think in our what it, I think it is in our friction model formulation, we assume that A and B were always positive rather than being non-negative. Um, and I think that it would be pretty simple to just adjust the friction model to accept negative values and just say a, and then in that case, it would all it would spit out. It would not try and do the log. It didn't want to. We wouldn't even. We would have a case statement so that it would be like. Well, if A and B are equal to zero, then just the coefficient of friction is equal to the reference coefficient of friction. Um, yeah, so you could, so normally you, normally you would put for stable sliding, um, you would put, uh, you would use the, the value of B less than the value of A, so that the more you, the sort of the, the, the greater the stress, the more you slide, but it also has more resistance. Whereas if you have uh, a value of A and B equal to zero, you, don't have, you have no increased resistance to the sort of greater stress. That's why I want resistance. Okay. <laughs> No, well, so my my linear threshold is in dimensionless units. So uh, I think I think I am a couple orders of magnitude smaller than the plate rate. So if we run this one, which I've already done, if we look at, oh, wrong, there we are. So I capture everything to the log. Now you can notice that there's a lot of time steps. So we start off, first iteration, no uh, slipping. Then we get sort of a, on the order of 100 iterations up to 200. Then we're getting a bunch with one iteration or the nope sorry that's not the, that's step five so let's look at step six um so rate and state we start off with about 10 iterations uh drop down to two pick up to about 20 20 and so you notice here compared to the slip weakening i'm i'm generally my nonlinear solve is converging on the order of 20 iterations that's good that means uh the solver is resolving the deformation well. It's only when I get really high numbers of iterates that it's sort of like, well, maybe I'm not capturing. It's taking so long for my nonlinear solve to converge. It means that the solution has gone very nonlinear. Um, and so the initial guess is not a good initial guess because it took so long to evolve to the correct solution. So 
100 iterations, you know, a little more, um, back down to 50, back down to teens. So I think these are when I'm doing the stable sliding. Um, and I think, and that's where it ends. So let's look at this case. I need to adjust my Python script to switch to step six. Let's go to the end. Here, let's let's go back to like I don't know, maybe eight thousand. Rewind it. <laughs> so you can now see in sort of stable sliding, there was a slip event up here. Nice smooth sliding, another little slope event. Uh, and now it's stable sliding. So let's zoom in the fault a little more. Let's do displacement maybe in. Uh, maybe the vertical showed a little better. So rewind. Uh, uh, go to the end. And you notice that the initiate the nucleation with the rate and state is much smoother than it is with the slip weakening. That's due to the fact that due to the fact that that nucleation is much more of a natural physical phenomenon with the rate and state friction than it is uh, with the slip weakening. Slip weakening it's a very sudden, uh, nearly instantaneous uh, type of failure. Rate and state um, evolves. So here's our we're getting some sliding up down here. There you can see, you can actually see that there is some propagation of the rupture. Um, even though we're doing quasi-static, it does evolve over a few time steps. Um, if I decrease this, I could probably chop this off to back to about, back it off to a factor of a thousand there. Maybe let's, this will be. So it's sort of hard to see. You can see the sliding down at the bottom of the surface. There was the slip event. Sliding here, it's somewhat smooth sliding. So there's not much stress drop. So there's not much sticking behavior going on with the small stress drop. Um, so if I look at those profiles in this case, oh, I didn't <laughs> include the wrong figure. Um, let me open up. So this is what the rate and state looks like plot every 10 years. So you'll see initial very smooth, steady creep. Here's our sort of significant slip event at the surface, near the surface, goes back over sort of a few time step. Then it's sort of stick slip behavior, contours getting very close. Things at the bottom are relatively smooth. I think this evolu variation in evolution is a result of variation in normal stress as we're developing um, the slip. So there's sort of more feedback here between the curve with the curving fault. Um, and then here's sort of another, the, the second sort of stick slip event, a little smaller in size, but you can see a faster rupture speed here. Uh, we get a little bit of a kink in our slip profile in that unstable region. And it has actually gone ahead of uh, the, the fault uh, near the base. So probably a little bit of, slip overshoot compared to the overall. Um, so that's it for um, this set of examples. Um, I do want to, I do have a, I think one more slide. Did you state variable? Your 27 uh, so let's look at the state variable. So let's see, output, uh, nope, that's, yeah, 2D subduction. Uh, step six, slab, top, XDMF file.
So my state variable. Oops. If I just look at, I can use the, oops, come on. So near the end, it's on the order of 10 to the minus 10 to the eighth, which uh, is a little bit more than 20 years. So generally, uh, so three times 10 to the seventh times 20 would be six times 10 to the eighth. And I'm one times 10 to the eighth. So I guess it's a little less than uh, 20 years, but it's on the, it's with an order of magnitude. Um, we can sort of see, uh, I started out at, six times 10 to the eight, that's the 20 years. Um, as it evolves, it's staying mostly in the order of six. There, it's starting to drop a bit once I get 100 years into it. So I wasn't too far off in terms of the evolution. Any other questions? Uh, I used a matplotlib Python script that I wrote. So matplotlib is a Python package that's very much like MATLAB. Um, the functions are named almost identically, so it's very easy to make the transition. Um, it's not included in the binary distribution, um, but um, you may, if you do, th if you have Python and package managers like Anaconda and, and so forth, it's pretty easy to install. Um, if you're on a Linux machine, uh, there's, there's uh, Matplotlib packages. Um, I switched from Matlab probably 10 years ago and I haven't looked back. Um, <laughs> uh, mainly it's, there's no, it's free, open source, and uh, I would say it gives better quality plots than Mat Matlab does and you have all of Python. Um, along with it so so final slide so sort of my tips for if you're going to play around with spontaneous rupture is that it often localizes stresses so you generally need uh, much higher resolution meshes around the fault than you maybe would otherwise if you're doing things like prescribed slip um, the friction parameters from the laboratory are usually not numerically tractable. Um, so you need to be careful unless you're modeling laboratory size samples. Um, you often need to regularize the friction model to obtain numerically stable solutions. Sometimes this is just increasing the slip or time over which the friction coefficient evolves. Um, it, you may also need to sort of for a given discretization size reduce the difference between the yield stress and the sliding stress. So that means a smaller variation between your static coefficient of friction and the uh, effective dynamic coefficient of friction. Um, and with the sort of high resolution meshes, you, you not only want to sort of decrease the discretization size, but you also generally need to reduce the time step um, as well, particularly compared to viscoelastic simulations where you may be taking time steps of 10 years. <laughs>